Hi friends, Juan the Yarn Addict here, bringing you a tutorial for a hat. My friends, the hat that you see before you today is literally called, It's Just a Hat. So simple, so easy. One of my Facebook group members suggested the name and I absolutely love it. It's just a hat. Many are made this way, but yeah, this one here is called Just a Hat. <laughs> it's made going back and forth. There is some variation to the top part of the hat that I'm going to show you. But yeah, we go back and forth and then we collect it at the top and then we fold it at the bottom. And there you go. You can make tons of these for charities. You can make them for yourself, for family members. Super quick to make. I'm going to show you how to make this. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, friends, so for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use a medium four weight yarn. The yarn that you're seeing right here is a medium four weight yarn. It is Loops and Threads Soft Classic in the colorway Cornflower. Love this color. And the hook that I'm using is a six millimeter crochet hook, otherwise known as a US letter J. You're going to need a pair of scissors. Isn't this the best pair of scissors ever? It's a little bird. Okay, focus one. <laughs> and then some stitch markers. You're only gonna need one, but yeah, just one. All right. And then of course, you're going to need a darning needle. So there's that. All right, and so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, my friends. What we need to do is create a slip knot on our hook, just like that. However you get to this point right here is fine, so long as it looks like this, okay? And from here, what we need to do is chain 40. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna continue going on to 40. I'm gonna pause and then I'll be back once I have 40 chains. You, my friends, you guys keep going and pause me if you need to, okay? I'll see you in just a second. Okay, friends, so I do have a chain of 40 here, okay? And so um, the next thing that we need to do is chain two more for the foundation chain. And then what we wanna do is in the third chain from the hook, which is where my thumb is right now, what we wanna do is yarn over, go into the chain, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through all three of those loops. And that's a half double crochet. So what we need to do is a half double crochet in every chain. just like this. Okay. And what I will tell you is, is that when you get down towards the end, you want to reserve the last five chains. And in those five chains, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a single crochet in each one of the last five. Okay, so that's where you want to grab your stitch marker. Um, for those of you guys who need it, you're literally just going to mark where the fifth stitch is from the end. So one, two, three, four, and five. You're just going to go right into that stitch like that. And that's a reminder to not do a half double. It's to switch over to the singles and then the last five will be single crochets, okay? So, continue doing your half double crochets, just like this, and I will meet you once we get to the stitch marker, okay? Okay, friends, so here I am at the stitch marker. So, I'm gonna take the stitch marker out, and now I know that the remaining uh, chains here will receive single crochets. So we're just gonna go in, drop a loop, yarn over, go through the uh, loops there, just like your standard single crochet. That's two stitches. Let's do a third one. That's three. That's four. And I have one chain left, so that's five. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and go right into that first stitch with a single crochet. But we're gonna go in the back loop only. 
just like that. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then the next stitch will be a half double crochet in the back loop, just like that. And before I go any further, if you need it, in that fifth stitch, you're going to insert the marker here. So one, two, three, four, and five, just like that, as a reminder to not go beyond that point with a half double, okay? And then now what we want to do is just continue going down the row with half double crochets, just like that. And if you see this here, this happening with all the loops, don't worry about that. As you work your project, it will actually flatten out. You're not even going to notice that. Just as long as you get the right one you're good. So I just did a few, right? And already it just went back. So just because it looks like it's pulled out, I promise it doesn't stay that way. Okay. So continue on going all the way down and I'll see you when we get down to the end of the row here. Okay. Okay, my friends. So here I am closing in at the end of the row here. I have this stitch here and this stitch here. Let me grab the darning needle just to point it out. So we have this stitch here to go in and then we have this one right here to go in. This last one tends to tilt to the side. That's okay. And if you get lost and if you're not sure if you're supposed to go into this one or not my friends, just remember the stitch count is 40. Five of which are singles and then 35 half doubles. Okay, so if you have to count by all means, go ahead and do that. But if you're looking at it like this, just know that this here gets a half double and so does this little nubby nub here on the end. You're just gonna have to tilt it back to look at the V. See that V there? So that's gonna get a half double, just like this. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do now is we're gonna just chain one. We're gonna turn our work and then we're gonna continue doing the half double crochets in the back loop. Okay, I don't chain two because this here, my friends, is actually going to be the bottom part of the hat and this is gonna be where the crown is, okay? So the single crochets that we're doing here, we're doing that so it doesn't bunch up as much at the top. I mean, you're gonna have bunching, but because we're doing single crochets, it doesn't get too crazy, okay? So that's the reason for the single crochets. It just makes it a lot nicer up there, especially if you're not one that wears the uh, pom-pom at the top, okay? So continue doing the half double crochet in every stitch, and I will meet you at the stitch marker, which is down here, okay? I'll see you when we get here. Okay, my friends, so here I am at the stitch marker. So what we're going to do is take the stitch marker out and we're going to do five single crochets in the last five stitches of course in the back loop actually yeah in the back loop it's one two three four and five just like that. We're gonna chain one, turn our work, and do five single crochets in the back loop. So that's one, that's two, it's three, it's four, and that's five, okay? So, I'm gonna go ahead and put the stitch marker back in just as a reminder to not go beyond that point, just like that. And then I'm gonna do a half double crochet in all the stitches of the row, okay? So what we need here, let me zoom out just to show you. What we need here, my friends, is a total of 35 rows, okay? So it's 40 long and 35 across, okay? So 
what I do is, is I look at my ridges. So this is row one and this is row two, this little ridge. So the way I count up is every ridge beyond this. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. So what you want for this project is 35 rows in total. So I'm going to continue doing all the rows and I will meet you once I have my 35 rows. Okay. So for you, it's just a second. For me, it's about another 30 minutes. So just sit tight. I'll be right back. Okay, friends, so I am back, and um, this is where I'm at. Okay, so I have 35 rows, all right? There's all 35 rows, just like that. And if you notice, let me make a bunny ear here. Okay, so your work should naturally go on a tilt like this because you have all these rows of single crochets and then all these half doubles here, okay? That's natural. So... Before we go any further, just verify that you have 35 rows, okay? So with your work facing you, come down here, and the second row here should be like a ridge row. So then you're just counting up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, and 35. So that is 35. We're exactly where we need to be. And now what we need to do is we're going to join this side with this side. So in order for that to happen, what we need to do is take our project here and fold it under, just like this. Okay? Perfect. And so what we need to do now, we're finished this row here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the tip of our crochet hook and insert it into the very first stitch of the very beginning. We're gonna draw up a loop and slip it through just like that and chain one. We're gonna turn our work and now what we're gonna do is match stitch for stitch. Let me zoom in so we can see a little closer. Okay, so what we're going to do is go right into the bottom of this stitch right here and we're going to match it to the very last stitch of this row here, just like that. We're going to draw up a loop and go through both, yarn over, and do that just like that. Go through both loops. Go into the next stitch and into the next stitch. Draw up a loop, yarn over, go through both. And you're going to do that for every stitch of the row. Making sure that you're going underneath the stitch here. Going right into there. Run over. Piece of cake. I would suggest, you know, working a little like on the tight side when you're doing this. This is something that you don't want to do too loose. It's the binding row and you want to make sure that everything's connected correctly. So if you have to take your time to make sure that you get all the stitches exactly correct, then take the time that you need. You want it to look nice and uniform like that. Okay, so continue doing that. And I will meet you down at the end here. Okay? Let's do, let me, well, let's do one or two more. So there's that, and there's that. Okay? Just like this, and just like this. Run over. Again, take your time. Don't rush through this part. Okay? All right, so I did a couple more. Continue doing this, and I'll see you at the end of the row. Okay, friends, so I am at the end here. Let me zoom out just to kind of show you the bigger picture here. So this is kind of what we're looking at here, okay? And then I believe I have, let's see, I have two more stitches to go. 
So I have this one right here with this one right here. And then this last one here with this last one right here. Okay, so when I end a row and I'm binding off or cutting off, I just chain two and then I grab my scissors, cut a nice decent sized tail, and then I pull my, or yeah, I pull my hook away from my work, pinch like that, and then slide down. And that's kind of what we're looking like. And now, let's just take a quick look at this. Look at how nice that looks. Beautiful. Are you kidding me right now? Wow. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue. So the outside is actually the inside, if that makes any sense. Okay, so before I do anything, I'm going to sew in my end here. So I'm just going to wrap around the eye of the needle, stab through, and I'm going to use this here to sew my ends, or my one end in. So go back, and come back this way, and then go back. Just like that. Okay, so there's that. Now, before I flip or do anything else, we need to bind the top. So, I like to have too much instead of not enough. So, good general rule of thumb for me anyway is I measure my yarn to the length and then I do that four times. So one, two, let me do it again. It's two, three, and four. And that's the minimum amount you should have. Okay, so I then go ahead and thread the needle. And then I bring this all the way so that it's like half, just like this, okay? And then everyone has their own way of doing this, but this is how I do it. So bring the needle through the very first stitch, just like that. And then I double knot this. And I tie it very, very, very tight. Do it again. Nice and tight. Okay, and so this is all I'm going to need to bind all of this off. So, or together, sorry. So what I do is, is I'm going to go in and out. In and out. And so what I'm doing is, see that last stitch? slash yeah i'm just taking that last itty bitty section of a row here and you see that every other one there's a hole so what i'm doing is is i'm going in and then i'm coming out of that hole in and out just like this and i'll just go ahead and tension that up a little bit and i don't pull it too tight just taut okay so i went out and then on the solid is where I go in, and then I come out of that hole there. Go in and come out of the hole. Go in and out of the hole. And just continue doing that. In 
and out, in and out. I'm just going to stay on with you the entire time here. In and out, in and out. Okay, let me just go like there. Go in and then come out of that hole there. And we're back at the beginning. Okay. So you still have some left, which is absolutely perfect. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this like a laundry bag. Just like that, real tight. It's We have it double plied, so I wouldn't be afraid of adding pressure there. Now you see this tail that we have here? We're going to use that to our advantage here. So while this is still pulled tight, I'm going to go ahead and take this and tie it with this. Nice and tight. I'm going to do that again. Okay. So for now, I'm going to leave that right there. And I'm going to take the rest of this here, and I am literally just going to go back and forth, making sure that I'm going in between fibers, my friends. If you do that, it will actually hold the project much, much better, and the likelihood of any slip outs is slim to none. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Just get it closed. <laughs> and make sure that when you're pulling your yarn, like after you go through, make sure you, you give that a really good tug. We need to pick up more fibers than that. There we go. Nice and tight. Okay. All right, so there we have it. Super tight, there's no holes whatsoever, okay? And then for a third time, we're gonna take this tail and we're gonna tie it with this. A third time. <laughs> well, let's do it one more time. For good measure. Okay. So this is the inside. I have no interest of sewing in the ends. You can if you want to. I'm not going to. It's literally the inside. So then we're going to go ahead and fold it out. Look at how perfect that looks. Amazing. So good. And let me zoom up like that. Okay. All right, my friends. So there it is. And then you can fold it up. You can do all the things with it. Anything and everything that you want to do. Look at how nice that looks, guys. Super fast, super easy. It's great. Here's the other one. So now we have two, two hats made the same exact way using two different yarns. It's great. So my friends, that was the tutorial for this. It's just a hat. <laughs> so if you like this, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then of course, hit that notification button to stay up to date with everything regarding me and my channel. My friends, that's all I have for you today. So until the next one, take care. Thank you.